into today's episode, let's hear a quick word about our sponsor. In today's fast-paced world, having the right connection is key. Whether it's a personal relationship, a business partnership, or a mechanical fastener. The right connection can make all the difference. When it comes to mechanical fasteners, a weak or unreliable connection can lead to costly downtime, safety hazards, and even catastrophic failure. That's why it's crucial to choose the right fastener for the job and ensure that it is installed correctly. Stay Fast Product Inc. understands the importance of the right connection. So don't settle for a weak or unreliable connection. Choose the right fastener for the job, the right people for your life, and experience the peace of mind that comes with knowing that your connections are strong and secure. It is Stay Fast's privilege to serve their customers with the right connection. You recording on there? And we live. So what was what did I say? We were talking about um, when people from your past see what you're doing now. Ah, uh, yes. yes. All right. Okay. So we were just discussing. Sometimes people from our past, and we all got a past now. Me personally, I've got a particularly wild one, I would say. And we were just talking about sometimes having feelings of unworthiness or maybe even imposter syndrome, where it's like people see us up here doing this, podding, talking wisdom and giving good words out, right? And sometimes me personally, I feel like people from my past might see me and be like, nah, I know I know better than that. He He's not really what he seems to be. But... You gotta be able to forgive yourself, allow yourself to grow, change, develop into a new being. And oftentimes, people can accept that and they'll just be like, oh, he's changed. Good for him. And other times, people won't accept that. And they actually will be looking at you like, nah, he ain't, he ain't that. I know what he is. And those people don't matter. So you should just prioritize, one, of course, forgiving yourself, two, allowing yourself to grow and accepting the change that you go through. Because if you're not growing, what are you doing? You're losing. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Listen, losers do that. And that that ain't you. you. I beg your pardon. I like having the headphones on. I might take them off. Though. I don't know. Oh, I'm not. I'm keeping them. No, but look. Okay, yeah, that's loud. First fade. It's looking loud. Ah, I see. Hmm. No, but look. At this uh, time in our lives, right, early to mid-20s, even 20s to 30s, we are changing. We should be changing. If you're the same person that you were in high school, oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're a loser. You should be changing. Now, obviously, it's not like everybody's going to be a completely different person. Some people come from really good households and were raised right. And, you know, they probably, Shout to some to extent, your... look similar, act similar. But in general, you should have some kind of change. That is how you know that you are growing as a person. You're learning as a person. Not just learning, but applying what you learn. Right. Um, that's how you know you're becoming mature. People who just stay where they're at, that's called being stubborn. That's called not wanting to grow and change. And that is not how you become a well rounded individual. Indeed. Indubitably. <laughs> Bro, I literally cannot say that word. Indubit indubitably. Indubitably. Yes, indubitably. Indubitably. And an enemy. No, but seriously, that's my point. You're, You're correct. Yes. I, yeah. 
yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go into this. Something I'm always... Oh, wait, huh? Oh, we not introing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I For some reason, I felt like you just did, but we no, really no. didn't. Welcome, one and all, to the mutual friend. I am Max. And I'm Dre. And I'm Gabe. And we are back from brief hiatus. Our producer, Gabby, is also in the building. Yeah. Shout out to Gabby. We are back from a brief hiatus. We're back and we're better. Come on. I want you bad as ever. Don't Your like, just let thing up. is like, it's bothering me just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Baby, it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. We have not shed light on the GoFundMe in mm. quite some time. The GoFundMe. <laughs> Shout out to everyone who has given thus far. That generosity right there, boy. Let me tell you, because they ain't have to do that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names, but a couple people. Mm. Blessings went above and beyond. Just blessed us, and we appreciate that because that allows us to do what we do. So thank you to everyone who was given to the GoFundMe, gentlemen. We haven't sat in these seats in like it feels like a while. Like yeah. mm, before, because we were trying to get ahead. Mm. So then we stopped for a little bit leading up to when you went on vacation. Yeah. Then you were on vacation for a week. And then like hasn't a whole another week gone by? Yeah. yeah. Two? Not two. Yes, two. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it's been like two and a half weeks yeah. since we sat here. Mm. So it's good to see your lovely faces, you know. Uh just keeping on the topic of growth. And change and self improvement. I always refer to the eight dimensions of wellness. It's uh, something I try to use as like a roadmap to make sure, as I say, my sliders are all up. Mm. Mm. So we can go through them and just talk about ways to grow and develop in each of them, or maybe ways that we have grown and developed in each of them. I just want to list them off real quick. So the eight dimensions of wellness are spiritual, emotional, occupational, intellectual, environmental, financial, social, and physical. Where would you gentlemen like to start? Beginning. Mm -hmm. Just go through the whole list. All right. Top to the bottom. And also, I think it'll be interesting for us to talk about how each one ties into another because... You know, a lot of these have effect, lots of carryover effect and principles that I think you can take into different dimensions of your well-being. But let's begin with spiritual. Honestly, can we just do like a high and low of each? Like things we think we've grown in really well and the things we need to grow in. So that way it's not all like good or bad on one. We're yeah. giving a nice mm-hmm. balance view. Do you want to just go down the line? Or do you want to just... We can go down the line starting now over there because I I can <laughs> gotta think. Uh, spiritually, I would say one of my highs is that I'm I'm very intuitive to where I I feel like I can help away from everyone else. N- not. Not in like a group setting. Like I feel like I'm best suited when I can speak to someone one on one, away from just everybody just sharing in one space. Because I, me myself, I struggle in that. Um, I don't, I don't know where I get that from. I feel like me personally, I because I work, I work through things on my own a lot. That it helps. It helps me, but maybe maybe this is a high and a low where maybe I need to get better at helping with what surrounded by other people. Um spirit spiritually you guys you guys like we've talked, obviously we just talked. It's 
it's a never is always moving forward for me. And that was loud. <laughs> it's, it's 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 really about just taking it day by day, knowing what the Lord asks of me. A comp and and not trying to do it all at once because I feel like a lot of people in their early twenties they want to skip ahead. They want to be where they see themselves in five years, see themselves in 10 years right then and there and forget to enjoy the process, even when the process kind of sucks. Mm. Oh, man. That's I, real. I, I've, I've been getting smacked with that one lately. <laughs> and for me, it helps, you know, one on one or in small, small settings to talk about the struggles. And I feel like. I don't overly try to assert my opinion on other people. I just try to give my opinion in the best, in the most simple way possible so they can understand the words that are coming from me because I don't always know if it's just the Lord just speaking through me. And I just want to make sure what I'm saying is just clear and simplified so anyone can take away what they feel like they can from it. So that's that's where I am spiritually. Is that the question? Like where we are spiritually? Yeah. Um. For me, uh, I think recently, probably my highest point of, you know, spirituality, I've been taking my my prayer life a little more seriously taking time to sit and listen with the Lord speaking to me. And it's amazing what happens and what he tells you when you take the time to listen. I was telling you, wonderful gentleman, earlier that on Monday night, I came to this uh, prayer time at church. Very small crowd, not a lot of people there. And I heard the Lord speaking to me about my priorities, like I told you before, so I'll tell the audience. Basically, the Lord was kind of Tell me that I need to really step into who I am spiritually and be who he's called me to be. And I'm not going to go all into that right now, but I bring that up because if I didn't take the time to actually pray and sit and listen, I would have never had that direction from God. But a lot of times in my own schedule, I'm, I'm too busy, you know, I don't, I don't make the time to actually sit and listen to God. And that's not good. So that's where I need to grow a lot more. But I've also I've been taking good steps recently. And also something I've been trying to challenge myself to do is spend time like studying the Bible f- just for the sake of studying the Bible. Like not to teach it, not to share it with anybody else, but just so I can know, wow, I spent time in God's word and... I'm getting smarter about the word. So something that I used to do a lot and recently I have not been intentional to make the time to do it. So there we go. I would say my intentionality is like the best word to describe where I'm at spiritually right now because I have a lot of stuff that's like changing for me right now and like I'm kind of going into a new season. And for the first time in my life, in advance, I'm thinking, how can I thrive spiritually with what I'm about to go into? How can I glorify God, represent him, rather than just going into it, thinking about what can I get for me? How is this going to benefit my life? Instead, I'm looking at just how can I be a light wherever I go? And another thing spiritually that like I'm going through right now uh, I told you I'm reading about the life of David because that's one of my favorite biblical figures. Uh, I see a lot of myself in him <laughs> with all certain scenarios. <laughs> and so... I'm an <laughs> That's crazy. And so I'm just reading up on his life right now, trying to see what type of wisdom I can pull from his experiences and how I can maybe apply them to situations that I've been in situations that I am in and situations that I know I'm probably going to face coming up. 
So I just feel very aware and focused and intentional with my spiritual condition right now, which I've never been able to say before in my life. Mm. So I'm happy with that. But a spiritual low point that I could probably improve on, honestly, like what we were just talking about is just like the understanding of the concept of worthiness. Like, Understanding that we're not worthy, but we also need to accept ourselves and forgive ourselves. And kind of like what I was talking about when I was talking about the comfort zone, understanding that our obedience is what positions us to be used by God. And it's not about us being worthy. It's not about us being great and like causing change or being quote unquote good people. It's about us being faithful and obedient so that God can work through us. Exactly. And I'm just trying to constantly remind myself of that so that I don't put too much expectation on me because I'm not that important. And I don't want to distract myself from obedience because I'm thinking about my own importance because I'm not important. God is just going to use me because I'm going to make the decision to be faithful and obedient. Mm. And I would want to add this. This is why a lot of ministries fail because a lot of people go into church planting or starting a Bible study or starting a YouTube channel or a podcast or something because they think I'm so great. I'm so smart and wise and so spiritual. I'm going to help all these people Mm -hmm. be better. Mm -hmm. And, I'm such a good speaker, I'm such a good musician, I'm such this, that, whatever. And then you fail because you're really relying on your own strength. Mm -hmm. The ministries and the lives that flourish are the ones that rely on God's strength and understand we're only worthy because of him. Like nothing that I'm doing is because of my own greatness, you know. So it's a good place that you're in and we should all be there so that we can humbly do the work that God is using us for. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, I just want to pray, one, that we would get better with praying before we start the podcast. But I also would just like to ask you to just fill the room right now and just lead us to say or do or behave however you want us to so that Somebody can get something out of what it is that we are doing. I pray that we would just position ourselves to be used by you, that we wouldn't let our own egos or thoughts of ourselves get in the way of what you have us doing here, and that your will would be fulfilled through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I can't believe we forgot again. But But I'm I'm glad we did because people need to see that prayer. They need to hear that prayer. Oh, I was going to take that out. No, leave leave it in. Leave it in. People need to know that we're led by the Spirit. (laughs) <laughs> and they could remind us to be led by the Spirit. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, yeah. Emotions? Emotionally? We want to go like... <clears throat> just uh, can we just popcorn talk? The one in the order is a lot. Yeah, I, emotionally wasn't next, but... Oh. I was going to go to physical. Wasn't that at the end? Yeah, but I, I don't feel like that's a, a banger place to end off, though. All right, physical. I can care. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> shout out Big Dunk because Big Dunk helped that's, me. That's, that's me. If the yeah, audience doesn't this is Big Dunk. Know. Big Dunk helped me cancel my gym membership. Wait, <laughs> you, gotta, you can't do that. I'm getting there. Tell the I am no longer going to the gym. a member of Planet Fitness. It's a round of <laughs> unless unless Planet Fitness wants to sponsor us, you know, hey, hey, actually, because hey, hey. Planet going, Fitness was a great gym, though. Back, don't don't get it twisted. It had a great Give amenities. It up for Planet the, Fitness. the massage chairs, the hydro thing, every, it's just I great, know. very good environment. Anyway, cancel my uh, membership at Planet Fitness. Now I'm a member at Esport of Fitness. Yeah, who should really sponsor us? Come on. Um, shout out Arthur if he listens. Anyway, um, 
So I'm a member of eSport now because that is where Big Dunk goes. And uh, we have been going to the gym together uh, recently. And it's been great because I'm getting there. It's been great because I've gotten stronger. I'm wiser. <laughs> I'm better. Anyway, um, I've gotten stronger. I feel better about myself. I've been more conscious about uh, just exercising, being active. And it just made me feel better because that was honestly a huge toll on my mental state because I knew that my physical slider was low and I needed to get on it because I didn't want to become fat. So, and unhealthy and die of heart complications later on. Anyway, so I'm glad that that has been uh, going on. I feel like, again, I've learned a lot about fitness, learned about how to be better with my body. And that is great. And I'm like, mentally, I'm in a in a place where I feel like I am thinking about fitness and working out and exercise every day in a way that I never had before. It, I feel like it's just part of my... It's just part of it has to be part of my week. Uh that being said, my low for the fitness mm. is that I had not go Monday or Wednesday. Um and I'm not making this use, but I was my hours at work were a little different this week. So it made it more difficult for me to get to the gym during the time I usually go. But that's not an excuse. That just means I need to adapt, improvise, and overcome. So I will be on track. I miss the gym. And yeah, so I'm going to be there. So yeah. All right, as the fat person on the podcast. Um me, I've been big my whole life, so it's like I we talked about this in the bonus episode that never dropped. Like oh, yeah, I, I have episode. no I don't Patreon. know what I would be like if I was skinny. No idea. I don't know if I I could be I would have I don't, I don't know I just you don't know I don't know yeah I feel like I would have been a menace of some sort <laughs> um for me it it wasn't until recently like I would say within like the last two years I started taking it more serious and like going to the gym with Tyler who's like shout out Tyler I don't even know if Tyler watches to be honest he should he, he should will. shout out Tyler though uh we we hit up to this gym OSF. Joker. The Joker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Joker. Uh, for me, I've always just been able to, like, it's never hindered me in any activities we've ever done. Absolutely. Like, we hooping, I'm hooping with y'all. Yes, you are. Like, a bucket. We all, obviously. Like, it's never stopped me. But I think for me, over these last two years, it's been about long term, like, just being here and, like, in a shape where I'm not hurting because my my hips, my knees, they hurt sometimes. Mm. And I just got to sit down. But it's like, I don't know what, like, maybe this is toxic for me. Like, I low-key like the pain. What? Like, it's like. Kind of super villain stuff is that? <laughs> I, super the, villain laugh. The The feeling, like, the pain, like, doesn't hurt until I'm not moving. And like once I stop moving, it's like, okay, that's when the pain comes. But when I'm moving, like I don't feel it. And I don't know. That, that the low the low for me is that I'm not consistent week in and week out of like how long I'm there. Like I need and for, because like like if I could work out with y'all, it'd be much better. But like our you schedule should. Our schedules, unless y'all can do like nights, like it's really gonna be I hard for do whenever. Here's personally. the thing, right now I just said because of this office stuff, I couldn't like, go during the time that I usually would. But now nights like might nights, have to be nights it. would be the move. I can literally go whenever I. I I'll, I'll 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 talk when I talk. You can keep yeah, keep going. going. I'll go whenever though. But physically, I feel fine. Like I hurt sometimes, but like. That's whatever. Like it really, it it just is what it is. Like I know, like I'm big because like that's the way I've lived my life. But to change it, I have to change that that lifestyle. So, mm. I mean, it's on me. And it's like I feel like people more people that aren't me care about it more than me. Mm. 
Like, people look at me like, oh, look at that dude. He's big. Like, okay. Like, you care more about it than me because I've been big my whole life. It's, and it's me. But it's, it will it be me forever? I, I ain't going to say I hope not because if it is me forever, God still loves me. I got a girl that loves me. I got friends and family that love me. And, like, we here for it. My only thing about that, well, two things, kind of. You said if you were skinny, you wouldn't know who you'd be. Have you tied your identity at all? I don't, I don't know if I've asked you this before. Mm-hmm. We probably, on that bonus episode, I think I maybe brought it up. Have you tied your identity to your physical form at all? Nah, it's just I don't I don't know what it lo- will look like. So I can't comprehend how I would act. Hmm. Well, why do you think that would change how you would act? <laughs> this would you look like? <laughs> the picture is uh, Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald. Shout out to Aaron Donald if you want to sponsor. sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were you saying? Now? Do you like? Why do you think that how you look would change how you would act? I don't know. I just feel. I feel like. I just, I just don't know. I honestly don't know. Like I just feel like maybe it would, and I don't like that feeling. Mm. My second thing is, you know, you don't have to be skinny. True. Like, and that kind of goes into. I would never want to be, to be honest. That goes into me neither. What I was gonna say, is. With my physical fitness journey, I still have a slim frame, but fan, if you could have seen me in high school, <laughs> boy, was skin and bones. Oh my goodness. Hated it. Was so uncomfortable, was so unhappy with how I looked. And sometimes I still be having a little bit of body dysmorphia where I'd be like, dang, I'm putting in all this work. I'm not getting enough results. I need to be. I need to be doing more. More. But <laughs> but you know what? More. Recently, and this is my high. Probably. Probably. Uh <laughs> at some point during the summer, I think when we did the bonus episode around that time, I was having like low self-esteem. And like, particularly like with my arms, I was like, man, I wish I had bigger arms. My arms just looking. I'm not happy with it. Right? And then I realized that whenever I'm dealing with low self-esteem, because I often have thoughts of low self-esteem, whether it's about my body or like just whatever, right? Whenever I'm feeling bad about myself, it means that I am believing the enemy's lies, right? So I have to look at myself and say, how have I been neglecting connecting to God to the point where the enemy's voice is now louder that I'm believing these negative things about myself? And so recently I was feeling like that again. And then I was like, I was like, uh, I got you this time. I caught you. I know what you're doing. And I, I was able to like reverse it and be like, I'm doing what I need to do, making progress at my own pace I'm happy with where I'm at and I'm going to continue to just do what I'm doing and then the thought just went away so I think getting over the negative self image is like my biggest high because like I'm very competent in my like knowledge of like fitness so just having the preparation to know how to deal with those thoughts when they roll in is like a strong mental piece that I need to continue on my physical path unimpeded. Mm. And I really don't have any lows. Let me tell you, I can make this into a low kind of. It's really a low that I just turned into another high. So won't he do it? <laughs> my diet. I'm not the most concerned with because 
my goals don't require me to have a diet as strict as say me what I'm having Dre do, right? But I was feeling convicted. And I'm getting into like some more backstory. I just apologized to you guys for like my tone recently. And like another thing where like just recently how my tone has just been bad with you guys, like even while you were playing pool and like he he's trash at pool if y'all don't very, know. Very right? trash. So I was getting on him. And like even the way I was getting on you was just like excessively <laughs> I didn't hear. Oh, she well because you were like I was getting on you, and then she was like, "Oh, is that what you're doing?" All right, I shout beg out your pardon. Shout out <laughs> aggressively. <my> <laughs> no, but just the way that I was cooking you, is that better? The way I was cooking you, like was just like just too aggressive, right? And then I don't know what day was that that I smacked the granola Sunday. bar out. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> now look, I say all this to say. I've been getting on you, and going back to the whole boss versus leader thing that we were talking about with Zach, even if I personally don't need to do the same things that you are doing for my goal, I want to do a better job at leading by example. So that's why I decided this week, no more restaurant trips for me. Last night, I had insomnia cookies for my last time. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was going to actually go to Bibby Bop today, was why it was funny that you had it. And it was going to be my last time there as well. But while I was at home, about to go, I was like, you know what? I don't even need to get this last one out of my system. I could just stop right now. So I'm going to be taking my diet a lot more serious and making pretty much all of my food at home, doing things for muscle growth, fat loss, for energy i'm gonna be making like a bunch of juices and stuff and like now instead of me just telling you what to do i want to be able to show that it's possible Mm. and like lay out how it can be done specifically so that we can walk this together instead of me just telling you you need to be getting better you know yeah me personally i'm still going to baby bob however my diet, that's something I got to go back to for the physical stuff. And BB Bob is a better choice than a lot of places, yeah. though, so. I need to get better with my diet. Now, I think I've improved in the sense where if we have the choice between this or that, I'm like, okay, I can't be having Chick-fil-A every day or some of this other stuff. Let me at least get something that's a little bit of a better option, right? Um, Try to be conscious of that stuff. But I can be better, of course. But this is kind of what I was going to say with the whole sliders thing. Did you make that up or is that for my dad? I made that up. Okay. Because I feel like my dad talked about it at some point. No, I told oh, you, you that <laughs> and you were you asked him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah grabbing like this conversation. Yeah. So um, I feel like in my life, once we, you know, skim through the rest of these, that a lot of these sliders are like they're – in a good place. I'm on a good... What I like to say is, I'm not where I need to... I, I'm not where, like, ultimately I want to be, but I'm on a good pace mm-hmm. to the goal. Exactly. Right? And really, once you achieve your goals, there's always going to be another goal. So it's not like... It's not like you'll ever be perfect, right? Mm-hmm. But my sliders are up in the right direction. Except for... when I Again, when I think about all the things that the Lord's blessed me to be good at and all these things are going well... Fitness thing is the one that is just not where it needs to be. And I'm saying that knowing that I'm sure there's people who are seeing where I'm at. And they're like, man, I wish I could leave and get to there. Absolutely. So it's all about perspective. But me personally, I want to be elite. Mm. I don't want to just be average and mediocre. I want to be elite. So that's why I'm glad that you're elite in this area because it's kind of like contagious and making me elite in this area. And, and then eventually... All of us can be elite in this area. And we're going to be like, man, we all helped each other out. Combination. In fact, we all helped each other out in this area. So, um, join Esporta. No, for real. Like, like we, we got to figure out when we can all go. So, either if we, it don't matter where we go, but like, we need to figure out when we can all go, though. Cause like, I really want to do that. And 
with my schedule changing, I can really go pretty much whenever, except for like in the dead of night. So, well, they close at ten. So, but yeah, nighttime's probably gonna be the move for me because early morning, no, it's not gonna happen. I'll be I like this. Is something you gotta realize with yourself. All talking about not you know growing and evolving and stuff. Listen, you also have to know your limits. Mm. You have to know realistically what you're not going to do. Because if I keep telling myself I'm getting up at five, six in the morning to go to the gym, I'm fooling myself because I'm not doing that. Gotcha. And then what's going to happen is I'm just not going to go at all. Mm-hmm. So instead of me saying I'm going to do something unrealistic like go to the gym at six in the morning, I should change it to something that's more realistic like me going at night because I stay up at night. So why would I not just say, you know what, I'm going at eight or nine or something because that's more realistic. So that's something that I'm learning. Wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. You got to fall in love with the process. Like, with everything. Like, with all this stuff we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, even going back to spirituality. Like, sanctification, mm-hmm. we always talk about as an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. With the physical, how I'm able to now, like, just be glad with wherever I'm at. It's because I'm in love with the process now. And it's mm-hmm. like... You're like, it's so stupid, like, for me to ever look at myself and be like down on myself because there's mad people looking at me like that guy's the guy. Like, you just called me elite. Yeah, you are. And I've, like, just a couple months ago, I was looking at me like trash. Mm. And it's like, what's the point of even having that perspective on yourself? Because uh, if as long as you're focused on growth, and a goal, and you know you're doing the work to go towards it, it doesn't matter where you are at any particular current moment. It's the trajectory. So, That's because being elite is a mindset. Yeah. It's true. not even necessarily, like, where you are. It's because it's <clears throat> just, like, you're doing the right things to get to, a, to the point you're trying to get. Because even if you were blessed with good genetics and you just look good or whatever you're like you're not elite because Mm -hmm. you're you're not being consistent you're not putting in the work you just you know you're just blessed with good genetics being elite is all mindset that's all i gotta say poor gabby she's gotta get up at when five still rough where what's the what's the place called where's it at East, East Florida. Florida Legacy Village. Yeah. Uh-huh. We got we we'll figure out a time though. Cause I'm down to go there, but I want y'all like OSF isn't bad. It's just That's what I was gonna say. Like I wanna know the hours for that too and like it's twenty four seven. Oh, exactly. That's what I was mm-hmm. thinking. Like, but um uh, you have a membership or he has a membership? I have a membership. Can you bring guests? Yeah. How many? I don't know. But if you come with me and Tyler then Tyler. Oh yeah, yeah. One ah. each. I'm down for both, yeah. but like, yeah, we got to get that. Cause like, for a long time, I was going to the gym alone, and it's like, I love that. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's like the one area of my life where it's like, I just go into it and I'm just in my bag. Yeah. So it's like I can go alone and be like completely fine, great mindset. But like, going to the gym with like, good motivational gym partners that like you know like they want to see you succeed like that gives you a different push you know and accountability as well so we got to get that going absolutely i like it you next. like it i love it <laughs> we're doing the next one the line some uh social let's go social <clears throat> i've got a lot of great friends Thanks, guys. All right, thanks. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think I think my low is obvious, and maybe Gabe can echo this because we have some similarities in this point. But combination. I love that. But my low is I am far from being a social butterfly. Amen. 
You don't need to be. That's why we love going places with Dre, because he can talk to everybody and Amen. we can just chill. When he <laughs> do it. But I could definitely get better at just speaking to people, just small kindnesses, you know, just being like, all right, how are you doing? And I've been working on it a lot lately. Like, I'm very intentional about saying thank you to people, about smiling at people when, like, they've done what? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> but like if they've like if they've done something like for me, like people that like work at the store or whatever, like I just try to just brighten their day in small ways, but like going up to people and like starting like full conversations uh-uh. can't do it. Uh-uh. But like I'm an entrepreneur and like networking is like the biggest part of that. So it's definitely something I need to improve on. But my high in the area would be I have great friends and I feel like I do my best to try to manage my relationships with my close friends very well, try to be very, you know, thorough with my friends. I don't want to be surface level with people that I call my friends because I view my friends as family. So I feel like I have really good friendships, but I feel like with the general public, My social skills are mud. Mm. I concur Mm. with uh, the social skills, especially my low is being able to just the small talk. That's the root of it. The small talk, especially with like, it's the the small talk with the people that you see on a regular basis but don't talk to. Yeah. Because you feel like I kind of, I know what they look like for sure. I know their name for sure, but I don't really know any like, information. But like, <laughs> like, and this could be bad, but a lot for a long time I just didn't care. It's not gonna <laughs> just, affect me. It's it's like, <laughs> like NPC syndrome. NPC. Like, like, talk. like I feel like initiating that small talk. It's like I'm opening a side mission with an NPC, like a side quest that don't, it don't matter to the full story. (laughs) It just could be a bonus to something else. But definitely that's, definitely that's my love for sure. That's excellent. Cause sometimes you feel like I can get away with just not talking to you. It's not really going to affect the big picture, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I, just, I really don't. We should have a whole episode about that. Oh, no. Mm. I guess. No, like... Whole episode about I, small talk. I say this all the time. You'll take point. I am a self-taught extrovert. Mm-hmm. Naturally, as an only child, I'm introverted. I don't want to have to talk to people. Mm-hmm. But I've trained myself... To be able to make conversation with anybody to make them feel appreciated, heard, seen, and acknowledged. <laughs> <laughs> Never me. I'm just saying. It was not what, me. Let's, I mean, that's what I can do. Well, for How'd real. you teach yourself? <laughs> Here, this honestly, two, two scenarios. One, being at church, and they used to do this thing. They don't do this now. Thank God. But they used to do this thing where it's like, okay, for 30 seconds, turn and say hello to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor. You see, my uh, neighbor is Matt, so I would have yep. been cool. Oh, uh, no, but cool. see, when I started going, I used to always go by myself and sit, like, where are those other... Like, I didn't know anybody, so, like, mm. I would be forced to talk to people or they would come to me. So, like, that helped Um, because, again, I was in an environment that I, I didn't really know many people. Um... And then second is entrepreneurship. Now, when I started the whole camera stuff, I was doing in very social environments, which were sporting events. And sports, you have to network. Like for, for, well, for for any type of entrepreneurship, you have to know how to network and talk to people. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, um, when it comes to photography and videography, we're all basically doing the same thing. You know, you have like your own flavor and your own like, style of how you do stuff but for the most part people don't care about that they just want the picture of their event pictures of their products or whatever the reason that they're choosing me over other people is because they know me Mm -hmm. right that is why 
they know who I am. Obviously, my work is good, but they know me as a person. So I had to know how to, like, do small talk and stuff. And I'll be honest, sometimes I don't feel like it. Like, sometimes I really don't feel like, especially when you got a, you got a long day of ministry, you're, you're talking to lots of people, then you get that one person who wants to just go on and mm-hmm. on and on. Let's about. call him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, I don't want to do this. But that person might really need it. So I'm going to push through and I'm going to listen. So I also like in the moments when I do engage in small talk, the exit from the conversation, I never know like when, like for me personally, I'm the type to like, if you get distracted for a moment, all right. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> that boy going to get the milk. Yeah. Like oh. I'm, I'm <laughs> and the pack of sugar. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh. Yeah, like me personally, like I'm, I'm just, I'm out, and I move from there. But yeah, that's my low. My high though, great friends. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like it's not hard for me to make friends, but it's just who do I trust to be my like there for me? Who do I trust to be my friend? Like trust issues. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We can move. We can move on. Uh, this is a fun one. Financial. Who wants to start? All right. Gabe, you start. Uh, financially, my high is that I have money. True. It's better than no money. Facts. Rather well, have it than not have it. Exactly. <laughs> you know that's what I always say. Come on. <laughs> my low is that my spending can be bad, and it's not always for bad stuff. Like if I need to help somebody, if someone like needs something from me, or if like if this would help that person. Like, and I always like if I go if I go anywhere, I make sure I always do a nice tip. Like even though I don't have a lot, like. That person, they could have That's it much worse. Yeah. And like they like that that ten dollar tip after ten dollars. <laughs> oh, I was $10. thinking three, four dollars. Ten dollars? If like <clears throat> like forty six cents. <laughs> like oh, if one penny. There was this spot, like for example, there was this spot. Uh Harry Buffalo, actually. It's not just some random spot. Yeah. Harry Buffalo. I was with Tyler. We were like watching a game or something. And like all I had in cash was a fifty. Don't you did not lose. I just left it. <laughs> you know, you see, earlier before we started the podcast, and I told you Gabe was one of the most generous people I know. He I was is. not just saying that. No. I observe this man, and I appreciate his behaviors. But it couldn't be me. Fifty dollar <laughs> tip. Like, hey, I've, that's incredible. You go. You God is gonna. God is blessing you, man. Cause sure. that that is I'm already blessed. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> bless, bless, bless. You know, my birthday is coming. Bless. Up. <laughs> hey, Gabby is a firm believer of not giving tips when we are going to get ice cream or pulp or nothing. Because she says, and I agree with her wholeheartedly. Why would I give them a tip for they literally just clicking nothing. okay to accept my money? They didn't do nothing. What tip do they get? They're getting an hourly wage just like everybody else. Why are they getting a tip? Makes no sense. But you can just bless people sometimes. But honestly, I don't have a problem with people not tipping the people that didn't do nothing. They just turned exactly. the iPad around. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. nothing. I now, obviously, a, a waiter or waitress, you know, of course you get a tip, especially if you did a good job. Yes. You know, otherwise, though, the mother folks, they don't get tips. Hmm. So. But I don't want to say never, though. Because, like, sometimes. They don't deserve tips. Is that better? Yeah, they didn't do anything to get you tips. know. Like, the only reason is, they do it. okay, we'll go. <clears throat> my rule for tips like that is if I'm a regular at this spot, I don't tip because you get my consistent business. Mm. Mm. Good logic. Other than that, like I'll tip you. Mm. Yeah, honestly, okay, this might be a hot take. Why do we tip barbers when the cuts is already expensive? Why are we giving them a tip? Because the next time you come, you want to make sure, <laughs> you, make sure you're good. Hey, 
But wow. don't they, shouldn't they bake that into the price of bake that in? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you expect? Okay, hold do you on. expect tips for photography and videography? <laughs> like, you put that in the price. Let me think if I should answer this. I didn't say do you accept. I said do you expect. Oh, expect no. Exactly. Accept for sure. Because I charge like my price, so people I get the money that I want. If people want to give extra, that's that's great. But for folks that be expecting tips, I don't know. Now I give a tip to the barber though. But, but <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm just saying I do. <laughs> I I give a tip on the app when I pay for the for the barber. But do they really need a tip though? She, she look before when he started asking me i thought he was going to be like how much do you tip the bar i was like hey wait no i wasn't going <laughs> to get exposed that, shout out terry shout out terry now that boy pause that boy put it on me this week man <laughs> <laughs> cuz people keep saying something about my cut and then like you said something yeah, the other nice. day I, i'm it's feeling crispy. good you know i'm about to try to do that myself soon oh yeah talk about it yeah so um for finances i want to save uh, sixty dollars a month, and I invested in sixty. I'd be blowing a ticket, but that's yeah. neither here nor See, there. I invested in uh barber equipment, and I got the Babilis Pros. I got the them gold Babylonians? effects. What, bro? I got the clippers. I got the shaver, and I got the liners. So listen, nah. Anyway, so Shit. I'm about to learn how to cut my own hair, and it's going to help me in two ways. One, I'm going to save money, clearly. Two, my cut can be crispy at all times because I think a good cut makes you a better businessman because it makes you look more put together. Indeed. And it's just a better presentation because I care about my presentation, my presentation a lot. I want to be fresh all the time. But I also don't want to spend money every week uh -huh. to get a cut. You always look great because you get a cut every week. Exactly. You know what I'm but me, I can't spend the money. Financially, I'm not. Is. I'm not spending the money. But financially, otherwise, you know, um, just like Gabe, I have money, so I'm. That's good. Uh, bad though, I work a lot of jobs and a lot of hours, but I'm improving. I'm getting better. Eventually, I will not work as many. Mm -hmm. So, finance. And I'll say one more thing. Um. And this will have to be its own episode at some point, maybe talking about this in more depth. But at some point, I was very convinced that I wanted to move out of my parents' house and get my own apartment. And I saved up all this money to get this apartment. And I was making then enough money every month to pay for it. And then I got denied at the place. And I was very sad. I was playing Marvin's, Marvin's room in the car. Mm. Um... But one, that showed me I can save money very easily. And two, it's really setting me up for success, hopefully, to be a homeowner and own some property with my wife. All right, moving on. Well, financially, a big high for me is lately I've been multiplying my efforts, you know, trying to find ways to... And like I said, how things can transfer from different versions of wellness. Finding... The least you can do to yield the most results is a valuable way to go about things. Let me explain. If you can afford your lifestyle, but it requires you to work 10 jobs, that's not optimal. You want to condense what you have to do, where you have to be. You don't want to be spread thin, you know? So you want to optimize each part of your life. And right now, I've just been finding new ways to financially support myself by doing things that I already enjoy to do. And I'll probably get more in depth on it as the podcast goes along. But just I've just been putting things together lately that are going to enable me to spend more time and energy on things that are of the highest importance. Like ministry and just enjoying myself you know uh my low for sure is my spending i said this when zach was on i can 
financially take care of myself, but like as I move into the future, uh, as I move into the future and like I want to eventually have a family and whatnot, like my mentality when it comes to taking care of my finances right now are not those of a father or a husband. And like, I know I'm not either of those things right now, so maybe I don't need to be worried about it. But mm-hmm. like, but like, I like to be prepared in advance so that I'm ready to take on new things. I don't want to like start a family and then be like, all right, let me figure out how to do this. Like, mm-hmm. I, w- I want to be good at it ahead of time, you know? And like, earlier this week, I sat down and literally like, looked at the last six months of income and outcome and fam cutting out on these restaurants for the physical benefit is good but the amount of money that i spent oh my goodness i was looking at bibby bop bibby bop bibby bop <laughs> insomnia insomnia bibby bop canes i was like yo what is wrong with this guy so i'm really starting to get it together now making sure that Pastor Dan really is the one that, like, got yeah. me really focused on this because he was, like, the percentage. He was, like, everybody is living on a percentage of what they make. Some of y'all's problem is the percentage that you're spending is higher than the percentage of what you're making. And something that really stuck out to me, he said, don't let your lifestyle that you want to be living determine that percentage. Let heavenly wisdom determine the uh, percentage. Mm. So now I'm looking at things like, all right, I don't need this. This isn't the best for me. Let me cut this out. And like I said, I'm finding new ways to make more money. So now I'm making more money and I'm also spending less. So I'm, I'm improving greatly in my financial area. That's good. We love to hear it. Yeah. You know, one other thing that can help uh, lower your expenses is go on less dates and drop your girlfriend. I'm kidding. That was a joke. That was a joke. (laughs) She was supposed to laugh. You're supposed to laugh. Oh. There's a Baker Mayfield right there. (laughs) I like Baker. Oh, my God. Yeah, you didn't need to. Was that that glass? What was that? That was the phone? Oh, my God. Of course. I was kidding. We're going on a date tomorrow. Uh, the next, uh, John, environmental. This is a good one. Huh? Environmental <laughs> wellness. You need Global to... warming. No. I'm confused. Your it's environment. sunshine outside? Oh, my environment. The things you surround yourself with, the places <sighs> you choose to be. I can start this off just to give you guys some, you know. I talk a lot about... Uh, my old self, my past days, mm-hmm. when I was wiling out. And a big part of that was the environments that I was placing myself in. I was behaving like the culture would dictate one to behave in those environments. And so you got to know where not to put yourself, mm-hmm. you know, for your best growth and state of well being. And you also need to know where to put yourself, where you can have the opportunity to thrive. And even further, you should have the capacity to alter your environment to some degree. But with that, you have to know when to hold and know when to fold. So, know when to hold on. Know when to fold on. Know when to hold I don't know the rest of the words. Know when to run. Mm-hmm. All right, so... <clears throat> Of course, we're called to be light in the darkness, the salt of the earth, right? So your spirit should be strong enough that you can add positivity to the places you go. But that doesn't mean that you have business being anywhere and everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So I often would frequent the clubs and whatnot, right? Now, I don't. Just because... Just because I know what I'm going to do if I'm there. Mm. So it's not in my best interest to be there. Another 
thing that I do uh, where I put myself in positive environments is stuff like coming to young adults, you know, being around you guys. Or, and I think I mentioned this before, recently I've been going to the library a lot if I need to, like, work on something. Like, sometimes I'll go to just edit the podcast and just not be distracted by all the things that are in my home because I know that's not going to be most conducive to me achieving the goal. Or I like to read scriptures and stuff in the woods because I just like to be in nature, and I feel like it adds to my state of peace. And once again, no distractions. And, yeah, you know, just putting yourself somewhere where you know the environment can add to your uh, mindset is very helpful. I would say my high and lows are, like, the same because I, I'm, i like, one of, like, four places. I'm either home, I'm either here, I'm either at Julius, and it, I might just be three. Those are, like, the only three places I really go. Mm. Work. Oh, work, do, work, do, work, do, home. Do, do. Work, work, home, Julius' house. Yeah, yeah. Three. So, like, I feel like I have good environments around me. Now, my low is that I'm a I'm a homebody. Mm. I, I love being home because I'm able to just relax, get away from it all. But that can be dangerous, too, because home has distractions. Yeah. Like, to your point, it's good to get, to get out of the house to to better yourself because when you're home, you naturally go back to just what you're used to. Yeah. And when you're outside of your home, you're ex- you could experience something that could change your life in ways you don't even know. And walking this path of life, it's good to have experiences. And if you're at home, you aren't going to have any. Yeah. So, yeah. I always say home is safe. So sometimes it's good to be home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like for me specifically, I've had like a lot of bad habits I've needed to break. And being in my room was destructive because it's like I remember all of the the things that I've done in here and it's like you know if you're trying to change and you're staying in the same environment, the environment might try to tell you that you you're not allowed to change and that you are the same. So like Sometimes I've had to just, like, while I'm trying to grow in a certain area, I'll have to just not be at home. Like, just because of the opportunities I've been afforded at this young age, I've had times where I was away from home for, like, several months, like, doing work or just maybe just needed to literally just get away from home. So I just went to a different city for a little while to decompress. And... I'll take it even further. Sometimes my room being dirty messes up my mindset. And I sometimes I need to just stop everything I'm doing and just clean the room because the quality of the environment affects the quality of my living in the environment. Yeah. I'd like just organize a whole bunch of stuff in my room. Got like new nightstands, new file cabinet, just because it's too much stuff mm-hmm. where I like organization. Also... Might sound stupid, but like candles. Oh yeah, come on. Talk Having a it. nice smell in your room, like it just, mm. I just feel productive in there. I love being at home. No, oh. so now you're taking us there. The smell of mm-hmm. the environment that mm-hmm. adds to the vibe, that adds to your feeling. It does, and that's like the only thing I'm like actually disappointed about about not moving out was that I couldn't decorate my own space. But mm-hmm. I'm saving a lot of money, yeah. so I will say I didn't start using candles until Julia came over for the first time, and now I always have them. See. The women will do that to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next one uh, is occupational, which is kind of similar to financial, but I would look at it this way, right? If you're working a job that you don't like for the money, your occupational wellness is low because you're making that sacrifice, which kind of is what I was talking about, about, taking things that I already enjoy doing 
and finding ways to make them make money will add to my occupational wellness because I'll actually enjoy what I'm doing. I'll be passionate about it, like things with ministry that are actually important instead of just slaving away in a job I don't like for years and years and years until I retire, you know? Yeah, yeah I really uh, love all my jobs, plural. Uh, the problem is that I have jobs, plural. So my occupational wellness is not at all where it needs to be simply because I'm spread too thin in too many places. So that's something that I want to change, something that I know for a fact that at this time next year I will not be in the same place. Um, so it can be better. And I and I want to I want to share this because there's probably people who are out there who are in my same boat where like it's not like you don't like your job. Jobs, plural. You actually do like your jobs and you make money. It's just you're you might be doing too much. Mm -hmm. So my advice to you is if you can quit. <laughs> Quit something. It's the that's what I, that's, that's what I need to figure out how to do. But I can't tell you how to do it because I haven't done it yet. So, <clears throat> for me, um, they're the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> they the sponsor. I love stay fast. <laughs> it is the right I, connection. That's true. I, but that's facts. To be honest, I don't always love it, but I also love it because I never. It's always it's always something. And I love, like, it's never the same day over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Like, one day I could be outside all day doing the grass, doing the weeds, doing all this trash out there. One day I could just be driving all day. Like, I like that I don't know what my schedule is going to be. But it's very ups and downs. And I can tell, like, it's physically, like, it'll hurt more than other days. Mm. But, like, overall, like, I, I like the people I work with. Like, it's, it's solid. But I won't be there forever. Mm. I mean, unless they, you know, sponsor me well. Shout out our sponsor. The Right Connection. Indeed. Great organization. All right. Uh, so these last two are major. We can kind of major key alert. We can kind of combine. Oh, hit it. Combination. We can kind of combine them. The final two are intellectual and emotional wellness. And I think I touched on this. On I was it, maybe it was what makes a man a man episode where I was talking about early in the morning, like when I first wake up, I have to like spend time with myself just preparing my emotional state before I go into the day. And recently, I've actually gotten very consistent with it. I've been doing a very good job keeping my emotions in check. And if my emotions get out of check, I'll be able to realize not long after, like, oh, I, I mishandled that. Let me make the right adjustments. And then with intellectual, I've been recently just learning new skills, doing a lot of reading, just always trying to make sure my mind is elevating in some way instead of just being satisfied where I'm at. So, mm. so I, I feel like I'm good with both of those for real. Yeah. Uh, real quick, emotionally, you know, we just had a great talk before this. Help me be in touch with my emotions. Um, I am evolving and growing since we recorded that episode, and I've been trying to be more. I've been trying to be more in touch with my emotions and actually take the time to think about what I feel. So that's good. Um, with intelligence, this might not be as deep or whatever, but I found myself. Doing a lot le like watching a lot less entertainment, yes, and way more education, and then I found myself being entertained by education. That's important. Like this is something that combination. I struggle to explain. 
I struggle to explain to some people when they're always asking, when are we going to hang out? When can we go do this, that, whatever? And all they want to do is mindless stuff that is not beneficial to making me a smarter, better person. Mm -hmm. And I just got to ask sometimes, how do you have time to even do that? I don't have time for that. I'm trying to better myself and be become better. Today when I left work, I listened to a financial podcast. I just looked up finance podcasts on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And I just learned new stuff about finance that I didn't know. And I've been trying to do that with documentaries and YouTube videos. Like just looking up new stuff that I didn't know. And I feel it's literally like making me smarter. So I'd love to share it at some point. That that <clears throat> goes into real quick. Your social well being is when people try to present things that are gonna waste your time and not edify you, you're like, I'm not interested in that at all. Like that's not what I'm going towards. Yeah. I've had to say that several times. Mm -hmm. Bro, even something as simple as learning how to cut my own hair. I've been that's something I'm learning. It's building my intelligence and it's helping my money too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully my look. We'll see. I would say for me, intellectually. Um what? What? <laughs> Combination. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Intellectually. For me, I'm always listening to podcasts at work. Um, it could be about anything. Uh from me personally, I don't stress about trying to be the smartest person in the room. I don't stress about you know, just trying to like be able to hold my own with other people because I'm I'm comfortable with where I am mentally. Like I know what I know and I know that people like me for me and they don't need me to just be this great great guy that like has like all this information, but I also know that I don't, I don't want to be dumb as a box of rocks. So I need to know my stuff. And that's that's important, you know? So I I like I find a balance. Like I'm up late nights watching whatever. Like some late nights I'm watching sermons, some late nights I'm watching finance finance podcasts. Some nights like there's this guy named G Gary V. Oh yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great okay. stuff. Should be I a watch guest him all the, the time. Podcast. Shout out to Gary V. I would love Shout to have him on the podcast. That'd be a great conversation. It goes it goes everywhere. Like I've like I growing up like I didn't live in the best neighborhood, and my mom didn't like me hanging around the kids around the neighborhood because she said they were ghetto, <laughs> and they high key were. And so, like, I was just inside. So, my brother, he was older than me. We're not very close, but I'm closer to my sisters, and so, like, I would hang, I would like just like watch them and like do my own thing. So, m majority of the time, I was just. Looking at something, watching something, and just like making up games in my head and then playing them by myself. Mm. So it's like I'm used to just absorbing a lot of information from where it is, mm -hmm. good or bad. Mm. You know, that's just how I grew up. Mm. So intellectually, I feel like one of my highs is that I'm able to take on a lot of information and like learn very quickly on my feet. Like I'm able to. Have someone tell me how to do one thing, I'm able to just do it and just react. Like with drumming, I can listen to a song right before we play it and I play it. Oh, yeah. Like not, you, that, not that you do that, of course, because of you're course, always prepared not. in practice for <laughs> Of course practice. not. That's crazy. But like, that, that's just something I'm you able to do. could do, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's fair to me. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hy hypothetically speaking. And my low, though, I would say is I don't always take the best advice when I need to hear it. Like, if I hear something in the video, like, that's really good. Like, I'm going to remember that. And I remember it in the moment, and it's like, but uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not confident that I could, like, follow through with that one thing. And I feel like that's probably, like, my low with that intellectually. And also, I do not like reading. Mm. I'd much rather listen to, like, an audio book or something than actually read a book, to be honest. Mm. I used to not like reading literally until like I got out of high school is when I actually started reading for real. I think I I like reading. I don't read all the time, but I like reading. So uh, 
All right, well. well Wait, emotionally? Uh, we kind of were doing both. Do you have something to add that has to do with emotions? Uh, my high is that I, I know my emotions. My low is that I don't like to share them. But other highs that you just were, so. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say real quick, when it comes to growth and development in all of these areas, I feel like a lot of people don't have a growth mindset. They don't have the desire to grow or change in any of these areas. They just kind of want to stay where they are forever. And you're that, better than that. That's not that's not what life is designed to be. Like life is designed for change, growth, seasons to come and go. So I would say for anybody that doesn't feel the need to grow or change or doesn't want to, the first step would just be to love yourself. I feel like people that don't want to change at all don't care about themselves. Mm. So we talked about on the unconditional love episode, like Mm. loving yourself should be unconditional. So like if you have any real value to who you are which you should because whoever you are is great and has potential that shouldn't be wasted you should invest in that potential and if for nothing else just see what you can do like even if (laughs) even if you're like afraid you think you might fail at whatever you're trying to change at or grow in or you maybe think people are going to judge you, or maybe the people you are around don't want to grow and change, so you don't want to outgrow them. If for nothing else, just don't die. Don't end your life without ever experiencing what could have been. Like, there's a, I don't remember whose quote it is, but there's a quote that says, uh, the graveyard is full of the most riches you know, untapped ideas because a lot of people never acted out on their potential Mm -hmm. and they just lived their whole life holding on to it and then eventually they lost their life and they didn't do anything. So I would just say don't waste your potential because you have potential. So just try to figure out what you can do. Just make small goals. Try to get better just this much every day and just see where you end up. was all I had to say. Is that a game? Song suggestion? I have none. However, however, I want to give a shout out, special shout out, to Justice Vance, one of the students in our youth ministry. She just now followed me on Instagram 50 minutes ago. Oh. Now, she was already following Big When Brown. I opened <laughs> this, I just want to expose her because this is crazy. she follows Gabby Braddock, Matt Duncan, the greatest. The great. Oh, the great. My the bad. Greatest. You're still the greatest, though. Oh, Isn't you. he the greatest? No, uh, crazy. Calvary, Ohio, and a bunch of other people. And the fact that she just now followed me is crazy. But I want to give her a shout out because. You're better than me. Well, yes. But because she has been, of all the people in the youth group, the number one supporter of this podcast, of this show. And she just deserves. Don't Yes, she deserves the highest applause because she's the best. Yeah. So, Justice, I know you're listening to this, hopefully till the end, but thank you for your support, and you're going to be on the podcast at some point. And all the other people who asked, if you're not on yet, well, you're probably not worth it. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's a joke. That, that's a joke. Oh, I have a song suggestion. I Want My Destiny by Fred Hammond. It's just a song about tapping into that potential that you have to become your greatest self, Mm. the the version of you that God had planned for you to become. Mm. I Want My Destiny, Fred Hammond. It's good. I say I want my bird. I want my bird. I want my bird. No, my bird. My bird.
<laughs> Go ahead. Uh, for me, I'm I'm been feeling very thankful lately, just to the Lord and all He does for me, for us. Just, just you know, He's He's Big G, he's like G O D. God did. God hey. did. God did. Uh, so this song is called "Thank You" by Forrest Frank. It is a bop. Played in your car. It's not a banger. It's a bop. Bro. It's a bop. It's a That's bop. fire. It's I a love bop. that vibe. It's a vibe for sure. Forrest Frank, thank you. And also, the song's called Thank You. I want to thank you, Heavenly Father. And this has been the Mutual Friend Podcast. I am Gabe. And I'm Dre. And I'm Matt. Peace. Peace.